The Isis Papers, Chapter 13 The Concept and the Color of God and Black Mental Health Agnostics doubt and question the existence of God. Atheists deny the existence of God. These two groups combined constitute a tiny minority of the world's people. The vast and overwhelming majority of the peoples on earth have a conceptualization of and believe in the existence of God, no matter how named or defined as a supreme force or supreme being responsible for the creation of the universe. Therefore, the supreme being constitutes the highest and ultimate focus of their worship, devotion, and obedience. In all but the agnostic and atheist groups, but the training and teaching of children about the concept of God in a given culture begin at the earliest possible age of comprehension and understanding. Customarily long before children are capable of understanding any philosophical and abstract consideration of God, they're exposed to the system of rituals that the given people have evolved over thousands of years. The rituals form a part of the recognition of, worship of, and obedience to the concepts of God. This long before there is true cognitive understanding, there is participation in the practice of recognizing God. This participation in practice becomes a part of children's and ultimately adults' concept and self image of self in relationship to the total environment, but also in relationship to the highest and ultimate focus of their worship, devotion, and obedience to the God of the people. For it is the totality of experience in the environment for the moment of birth that forms a self-image and self-concept in the brain computer of each human being. From this image and self-image and self-concept, all patterns of behavior evolve. Likewise, from the entire constellation of behavior in the individual, the determination of mental health or mental illness is made. As a practicing general and child psychiatrist, my definition of mental health is as follows. Patterns of logic, thought, speech, action, and emotional response in all areas of people activity that simultaneously reflect self and group respect and respect for harmony in the universe. The critical question that arises now is, what does the concept and color of God have to do with black self and group respect and respect for harmony in the universe? The oppression of black and other non-white people means that there is not, no non-white self-determination. It also means most fundamentally that there can be no true and functional black self-respect. More specifically, this means that the existing levels of non-white functional self-respect as manifested in all areas of people activity are extremely low. Thus, these low levels of functional self-respect imply that the self-image and self-concept are more negative than positive. Likewise, the impact of non-white individual collective behavior in and on the total environment is more negative than positive. To have a negative impact on the total environment is a manifestation of behavioral powerlessness. To have a negative impact on the total environment is a manifestation of the self-image and self-concept as powerless. To have a negative impact on the total environment is a manifestation of having been shaped and molded by the total environment into a functional inferior through the process of inferiorization. The process of oppression is to mold the victims of oppression into functional inferiors. As previously stated, the global system of white supremacy oppression functions through all areas of people activity. The ultimate thrust towards the victims of oppression in all of the nine areas of people activity is to cause and affect their universalizing. This is achieved equally in the area of religion as in sex. It is achieved equally in the area of war as in economics. It is achieved equally in entertainment as in labor. It is achieved equally in politics as in law. In other words, all nine areas of people activity are used equally in a system of non-white oppression to achieve the ultimate goal of non-white inferiorization. The concept and the color of God are focused on most strongly in the area of religion, although all areas of people activity overlap, influence, and fuse with one another. The global white supremacy system evolved a religion referred to as Christianity. However, it is referred to most appropriately as the dominant pattern of religious thought generated by the white supremacy system. Similarly, all forms of economics within the global white supremacy system, whether referred to as capitalism, multinationalism, communism, or socialism, are identified more appropriately as the patterns of economic thought and practice generated by that system. Further, all forms of political organization within the global white supremacy system, whether referred to as democracy, Nazism, Soviet hegemony, fascism, and nationalism are referred to more appropriately as the various patterns of power relationships generated by that system. Absolutely critical to the white supremacy system of religious thought was the formation of the image of the white man as the son of God. This white male image 
then was referred to as Christ, no matter that the prophet Jesus was a black man. Because the brain computer functions most fundamentally on logic circuits. At deep unconscious levels, it automatically computes that God, the father, is also a white male. If God is other than white, he would have produced a black or non other non-white son. See diagram three. Thus, any person programmed to accept the Christian religion, whether conscious of it or not, has the image and the concept of God as a white man in a logic network of his or her brain computer. Couple this image and concept of God as a white man with the white supremacy system's formal definition of God as a supreme or ultimate reality. The being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness whom men worship as creator and ruler of the universe. Then of absolute necessity, the logic and circuits of the human brain computer have to print out the white man as God, the father of the white male Christ, is a supreme or ultimate reality. The white man is the being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness whom all men should worship as creator and ruler of the universe. With this unconscious logic circuit of God is a white man firmly in place, white domination over non-white people could last for one trillion years. This would be true if the critical and essential logic connection could be implanted and plugged into the brain computers of sufficient number of black, brown, red, and yellow peoples who constitute the vast majority of the peoples on the planet. With the white man as God, the non-white global collective would be obedient to the white man always. It was the necessary duty of the vast army of white supremacy, Christians, minister or missionary sent out around the world following the guns of white supremacy conquest to implant deep within the unconscious logic networks of non-white brain computers, the critical image and concept of God as a white man. This unconscious implantation has been successful to the extent that many non-white people on the planet conceive of themselves as members of the Christian white supremacy religion. In the U.S., the overwhelming majority of black people as well as a large portion of other non-white peoples consider themselves Christians. Thus, all black and other non-white peoples who profess to be members of the Christian white supremacy religion, whether they are conscious of it or not, worship the white man as God, not as a God, but as the God. And in the unconscious logic network of their individual brain computers lies a logic that the white man is the supreme or ultimate reality, the being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness, who men worship as creator and ruler of the universe. Although black and other non-white peoples may understand that they are oppressed by the global white collective, of which the white males are the dominant members, the brain computer's cold logic circuits also unconsciously inform the non-white Christian victim that it is impossible to free or liberate oneself from the supreme being who has created the universe. In other words, if in the deep unconscious recesses of my brain computer rests the fundamental logic that God is a white man and that I should worship God, all of my attempts at liberation will only move me in a circle. Indeed, the circumference of my liberation movement circle could be so wide that it really appears to me that I am moving in a straight line of progress. But moving in a circle, no matter how big the circle, is tantamount to standing absolutely still, marking time. Many black people in the U.S. now are beginning to feel as though our liberation efforts, in spite of the loss of life and whipped heads, have left us still standing on the same spot of white oppression. For the vast majority of black and other non-white peoples today, the arrival of these ice-cold facts of brain-computer logic at the conscious level will be the experience initially as shattering and self-disintegrating primarily because it is God the protector and God and the creator upon whom the self is taught, programmed, ultimately to depend. If the concept of God is removed from my brain computer, upon whom am I to lean, especially if I am feeling oppressed, depressed, and overwhelmed? If there is nothing or no one to provide support, then I believe that I will collapse and disintegrate. Nonetheless, as a general and child psychiatrist, I'm fully aware of the destruction spawned by the unconscious logic implant, God is a white man. However, no matter what the level of initial trauma felt when this logic circuit is brought to conscious awareness, it must come fully to light and be yanked out. Indeed, there could be no mental health, self-respect, or positive self-concept for black or other non-white peoples as long as this spacious and destructive logic circuit remains in place. It might be instructive at this juncture to recall that Christianity was based upon the life and activity of an African black prophet named Jesus. That the white Romans recognize this fact is reflected in the early portrayals of Jesus and his mother as the black Madonna and the black child. 
To this day, the picture of the Black Madonna and Black Child secretly is cherished as one of the most holy icons of the original Christian church, the Catholic Church. What then necessitated changing the image of Black Jesus and Black Mary to White Christ and White Mary? To answer this question, we must return to the most fundamental fact in the existence of the Global White Collective. White skinned peoples initially were the mutant albino of black peoples in Africa. These white skinned people are recognized as having a disease. Just as today's modern science of genetics refers to the condition of albinism, the lack of melanin pigmentation as a genetic deficiency disease. The white skinned early albinos were rejected by the normal pigmented majority. They were chased out and isolated from the normal black genetic groupings. Eventually, they had to migrate northward to remove themselves from the intense African sun rays. Migrating northward from Africa, the albino populations eventually settled in the area of the world now referred to as Europe. There, they increased in number and eventually returned to conquer the peoples of color in Africa, Asia, and the rest of the world. They returned with the idea that they would conquer and no longer think of themselves as rejected and diseased population. Instead, they would think of themselves in compensation as the superior and supreme superman and look upon all skin pigmented peoples as the genetic inferiors. With the necess necessary the necessity for such a comp compensatory ideology and concept of self as superior, the white psyche could tolerate no concept of anything higher than the white self, not even God. Thus, when the concept of the son of God was formulated, in their thinking, the son eventually took the form of a white man which by brain-computer logic would mean that God himself had to be a white man. Thus, the white collective in logical reality is not in worship of any force beyond itself. Further, it is apparent that the collective white psyche felt anger towards God for bequeathing them that what is now understood as a genetic defect, named white skin. In turn, they have spawned the thinking that doubts and denies the existence of God. Thus, they have conceived of themselves as being at war with nature which is a reflection of God. It functions as though they are in contest with God and try to outcreate God. Presently, they are in a quest to produce genes and life itself. In fact, their dominant occupation is the destruction of the universe, and it is at no accident that within the language system of the most highly evolved white supremacy unit, the word God is the exact mirror image of the word dog, and within the same language system, the dog, not God, is said to be man's best friend. Blacks and other non-white peoples who have operated under the concept of God as a white man for the past 2,000 years should begin an immediate return to the fundamental concept of God as originally understood in Africa before the input of the albino white collective. The African understanding of God was that it was only an all-in-one energy force that created and simultaneously was all energy in the universe. This understanding recognized the God force as the source of all the being responsible for all, and the multiplicity of energy configurations in the universe. Furthermore, the belief held that there are no energy configurations in the universe that there are not from God and that are not God. It was the African way to respect completely the source of all energy manifest in and responsible for all things. This is African spirituality. Spirit is energy. Spirituality is the ability to get in touch with not only the ultimate source of all energy, but also the various multiplicity of energy configurations, which include matter, plants, animals, etc. This was for Africans the essential cosmic connection, the power connection. Since melanin is a superior absorber of all energy, it is essential to establish this understanding of God and all energy. The fact that the albinos or whites lack melanin may also help to explain why they have quite a difficult and different concept of understanding of God all energy or all spirit, why they conceive of a trinity, and why, in the view of many non-white peoples, they, uh, they the whites lack spirituality and its capacity to tune in to and thereby establish harmony and justice in the universe. Further, because they lack the melanin sensory system, they cannot intuit all that at once. However, at some unconscious level, there must be within the collective white psyche the awareness that the color black is essential to be in touch with the God force, justice, and the wisdom. And that is why they clothe their men and who are supposed to have knowledge of justice in black. And they clothe their scholars at the point of their scholastic wisdom achievement in black academic robes. Of course, one might cite a few exceptions, but black for ministers, priests, judges, and scholars is the norm in the white supremacy system culture worldwide. 
I recommend that black and other non-white peoples begin to practice consciously removing the white image of son of God from their brain computers and thus removing the corollary logic that God is a white man. Secondly, blacks and other non-white peoples must practice utilizing our particular energy crystallizations or bodies as direct connections with the God force. This means we must learn to use our energy crystallization antenna to connect with the source from which all energy flows. It is the same as unplugging an electric cord into a wall socket. By so learning to tune into the cosmic energy source, it is possible to find the cosmic purpose of one's particular energy configuration known as one's body. Then it will be, will be possible to use that cosmic energy for constructive purposes. I can say no more about how it can be done, but only that it can be done. Just as I am saying that it is possible to break the logic circuit, God is a white man in the non-white brain computer. To be black and accept consciously or unconsciously the image of God as a white man is the highest possible form of self-negation and lack of self-respect under these specific conditions of white domination. Such perception, emotional response, and thought are therefore insane. This logic circuit ensures that black people always look up to white people and therefore down upon themselves. Only by breaking that logic circuit can the concept of black and other non-white liberation become a reality. This is the direction in which we blacks must propel ourselves as we enter the 21st century.